A video has been released on Telegram social media app, showing Ukrainian soldiers meeting and dialogue with the local residents of Russia's Kursk region. One of the women, who wanted to leave the area, spoke to the soldiers in Ukrainian and asked them whether she could board their military vehicles. The Ukrainian fighters said there was ammunition in the combat equipment, and that they could not let her board it. They asked the woman whether she was Ukrainian. The woman responded that she was not Ukrainian, but knew the Ukrainian language well. As the Ukrainian soldiers chanted the slogan, Glory to Ukraine, the woman responded, Glory to Ukraine. Freedom of Russia Legion addressed the residents of Kursk Oblast, calling on them to write petitions to Putin. Russian volunteers fighting on the side of the Ukrainian armed forces drew the attention of Kursk residents to the fact that the Bucha scenario that the Kremlin propagandists were expecting did not materialize in their region. Civilians are not lying by the roads but are writing petitions to Putin asking for help, the LSR telegram channel indicated. Russian volunteers reminded their compatriots that Putin did not save the residents of Belgorod region, on whose heads cabs from Russian army bombers have been falling for several months. Bad news! Putin won't help you, but we can. They promised at Freedom of Russia. LSR called on residents of the Kursk region to record the movements of Russian troops on photos and videos and send them to them. Recall, a counter-terrorism operation regime has been implemented in the Bryansk, Kursk and Belgorod regions of Russia. Moscow cites an increased threat from Ukraine as the reason for these measures, according to the Russian National Anti-Terrorism Committee and acting governor of Kursk region, Alexei Smirnov. The Russian side reports that the decision to implement the counter-terrorism operation regime in the Bryansk region was made by the local FSB office led by Major General S. V. Voronin. Russia National Anti-Terrorism Committee statement cites increased levels of sabotage and terrorist threats from Ukraine as the reason for these measures. Additionally, the announcement includes notifying interacting security forces and local authorities in the region. Similarly, the authorities of the Kursk region have also announced the implementation of the counter-terrorism operation regime in the area for comparable reasons. By the decision of the National Anti-Terrorism Committee, due to the increased level of sabotage and terrorist threats from Ukraine, the counter-terrorism operation regime has been introduced in the Kursk region. The Kursk governor posted, The Russian National Anti-Terrorism Committee has also announced the implementation of the counter-terrorism operation regime in the Belgorod region. The National Anti-Terrorism Committee statement describes an unprecedented attempt by Ukraine to destabilize the situation in several regions of Russia. The committee notes that additional measures are being introduced in the three regions to enhance anti-terrorist security. The Kursk incursion undermines Russian ruler Vladimir Putin's authority and could strengthen Ukraine's position, Bloomberg reports. The incursion of up to 1,000 Ukrainian troops into Russia's Kursk region, now in its third day, has caught the Russian military off guard. It is the first instance of a foreign army penetrating Russian territory since World War II. On August the 7th, Putin called an emergency meeting with his military and security service chiefs for an explanation. Angered Russian military bloggers have criticized senior officials for gross incompetence. European gas prices have surged following reports of fighting near a crucial Russian station on the last remaining pipeline route to Europe through Ukraine. Despite this, gas supplies continue to flow. Ukraine has not yet disclosed details about the operation or its goals. Speculation includes theories that the incursion could be aimed at seizing territory for future negotiations with Moscow or serving as a diversion to relieve pressure on Ukrainian defenses by drawing Russian forces away from the front line. 
The White House stated it would seek a better understanding from Kyiv, noting that Ukraine has not violated U.S. regulations regarding the use of American-supplied weapons inside Russia. The incident has highlighted the vulnerability of Russian border defenses, mainly as more Russian soldiers are engaged in Ukraine. It has also bolstered Ukrainian morale. The incident has also undermined the Kremlin's carefully crafted image of Putin as the defender of ordinary Russians. Instead, the war he started in Ukraine has increasingly flown into Russia, with people in border regions facing constant threats from shelling and drone strikes targeting critical industrial sites. For Ukraine, this situation strengthens its argument that the US and European allies should not be intimidated by Kremlin threats of escalation and should support Ukraine's efforts to confront Putin in any way necessary to expedite the end of the conflict. Lieutenant Colonel Janek Kesselman, Deputy Commander of the Estonian Defense Forces Intelligence Center, believes that the military operations in Russia's Kursk Oblast will likely force Russia to redeploy its troops. Kesselman noted that Russian forces were likely unprepared for the Ukrainian operations in the region with the attack catching them off guard. He also noted that based on open data, Ukrainian troops had advanced about 15 kilometers from the border into Kursk Oblast. It is possible that the second line of Russian defense in the region has been partially breached. The offensive of Ukrainian troops in the Kursk area is likely to lead to the redeployment of Russian Federation units from other areas to ensure the defense of Russian units and counterattacks against Ukrainian forces in the region, Kesselman said.